the next agency function a bank performs is accepting of standing instructions i will give an example which will clarify the concept suppose there is a person he has to pay every month his lic premium something around 5800 rupees he has to every month pay uh, the premium for lic insurance policy now if he, he has to every month he has to remember it send a check uh, keep it a diary suppose in one month he does not pay then the policy will be uh, will policy will lapse a lot of consequences follow so what he can do is he can give a standing instruction to the bank he will give the policy details the place where the, the bank name of the insurance company where he has taken the policy policy details uh, the money should be remitted to whom all these details will be given and he will ask he will give a standing instruction to his bank let us suppose his bank is uh, catholic syrian bank so he will give this instruction to catholic syrian bank and catholic syrian bank will record this instructions and every month on nowadays you know we have got computers earlier we used to put it in um, standing instruction book and every day we used to go suppose some days due to any holiday or something like that some mistake standing instructions may not be also executed so we had all those problems because those were manual days nowadays this is standing instructions are added to the computer in core banking solution and automatically on the day suppose he is the 5th of every month 5800 should be remitted debited to his account and the money should be credited to lic then exactly on the 5th of each month the money will be debited by debited in the account and the money will be remitted to uh, the life insurance corporation uh, this function will the, the the bank will do as an agent for the customer this will be put uh, this will this will be uh, it will give a lot of help to the customers because he need not diarize remember and execute it every month uh, this will be taken care of by the bank so this is called uh, standing instructions this is one of the agency functions performed by commercial banks the next agency function performed by commercial bank is that collection of checks and bills let us look at collection of bills banks collect bills and checks on behalf of their customers you may have a doubt why should a bank collect this why should the bank be interested with this responsibility for collection of bills first we will deal with the bills and then we will go to checks why should the bank be given the responsibility for collection why the banks should accept this function you may have a doubt i will give you a real life example which will make the concept very clear for you i have worked in gujarat in various states of india i have worked one of the states in which i worked is gujarat in gujarat there is a place called rajkot this rajkot is very famous for wall clocks there are the, the there, there are manufacturers who manu manufacture huge volume of every day something around 1 lakh 2 lakhs watches are being made and they are being s s uh, sent all over india if you take kerala from rajkot watches come at least to 100 centers 100 to 150 centers in kerala only in tamil nadu some 300 400 centers so what this manufacturer let us take one typical example let us assume there is one manufacturer a and company in rajkot in gujarat he has every day he is making lot of watches 1 lakh 2 lakhs watches and it is being remitted to sent to all over india so this a how he is sending what he will do is let us take an in, uh, example this uh, a and co who is one of the biggest uh, watchmakers in india he has he is sending to trivandrum and alappi in kerala let us take only two examples so what he will do he will make the watches 
he will make one big bundle of all the watches to be sent to Trivandrum and another bundle for uh, Alepi and he will put it to the either the railways or through road transport corporation in which he, has, he will get either the lorry receipt or the railway receipt. So the parcel will be made and the parcel will be first uh, either sent through, let us assume that they are sending through railway. So railway will get a railway receipt. So A and company, this A and company which is the biggest manufacturer, so they will have, they will first have, they will make a bill of exchange. This bill of exchange is nothing but a document which says please make payment of rupees for suppose this bundle to Trivandrum is for 2 lakhs. Please pay 2 lakhs. So it is only an instrument, a negotiable instrument. So it will say you have to pay me 2 lakhs. That's all it will say. Then second, they will take a railway receipt. Railway receipt is a receipt issued by the railways evidencing that one parcel has been sent from Rajkot to Trivandrum. And the railway receipt Unless the railway receipt is produced in Trivandrum, uh, this uh, parcel you cannot get back. So this railway receipt will be there. And then one covering letter. These three documents they will prepare. Then this A and Co's bank is, let us say, uh, Punjab National Bank. They will go and deliver these three documents to Punjab National Bank, Rajkot, and they will ask that please forward this document to your Trivandrum branch and deliver to the Trivandrum customer against payment of rupees 2 lakhs. So Punjab National Bank will accept all the three documents, Punjab National Bank Rajkot, it will forward the documents, all these three documents to Punjab National Bank Trivandrum. Punjab National Bank Trivandrum will send an intimation to the customer, Trivandrum customer who has ordered for the watches, they are the regular client who is selling watches, that watch company, maybe Trivandrum watch company. This is the company which is receiving the watches. So, this they will send the intimation to this company. This company will make payment of 2 lakhs and take delivery of all the 3 documents from Punjab National Bank. So, the Rajukot A and, this A and company, they are sending value of watches worth 2 lakhs. Suppose they send directly the railway receipt to TWC. Trivandrum watch company, they don't know when the money will come. Or suppose this Trivandrum watch company remits 2 lakhs to uh, A and company Rajkot, they don't know when the watches will come. So they cannot rely on each other. There is a, uh, you know, there is in business, how do you de depend on the other fellow? Here in this case, the watches reach the Trivandrum railway station, they go and pay 2 lakhs, take delivery of railway receipt. And when the delivery, railway receipt is delivered to the Trivandrum railway station, they will hand over the parcel, watch parcel to the Trivandrum watch company, Trivandrum. They will go and then bring it to their shop and then sell it to the various individuals. So, this commercial transaction between this A and company and this TWC in Trivandrum, who are separated by a huge distance of something around 1500 or 800 kilometers, is cemented through the banking mechanism. So they, uh, all the A and company has to do is, they have to prepare the parcel, parcel, send it, put it in the railway wagon, take a railway receipt, produce bill of exchange, covering letter, then deliver to Punjab National Bank uh, Rajkot. Punjab National Bank Rajkot will forward the document to Punjab National Bank Trivandrum. Punjab National Bank Trivandrum will deliver the documents only against payment. Therefore, money will come back to A and company automatically. In this process, this bank, Punjab National Bank, will take a commission for the services rendered. So, this is called a collection of bills. This service is bank, banks are doing it as an agent for 
whenever they are doing it uh, here they are going, going to do it uh, as an agent for uh, AN company similarly assuming that uh, same transactions uh, comes through check uh, this uh, tri uh, Trivandrum watch company sends a check for uh, 2 lakhs uh, then they will deposit with the Punjab National Bank Punjab National Bank will collect it on behalf of AN company not only bills uh, but checks are also collected so collection of checks and bills is one of the uh, other uh, agency function of uh, banks. Supposing, assuming that Punjab National Bank is not having a branch in Trivandrum. Let us assume uh, Punjab National Bank is having only branch in Rajkot. They don't have a branch. Then they will send it to some other bank. Maybe Kanara Bank Trivandrum. Or State Bank of Trivandrum. And then State will collect the money from this uh, TWC and then remit the money to Punjab National Bank. Punjab National Bank in turn will give it to AN company. So this is a very good service being done by uh, banks. But for banks, uh, this transaction itself cannot take place. That is the beauty of it. Because AN company cannot rely on Trivandrum person. Trivandrum person who is at a distance of 1500 kilometers, he cannot rely on AN company. So the transaction will not take place because there is an intermediary called a bank on whom you can depend and on whom both persons can depend. Depend AN company sends the goods uh, by railways and the railway receipt is handed over to the bank and the bank will part with the railway receipt along with the other documents only against the payment. Suppose this the Trivandra March company does not pay the money. What will happen? The documents will be sent back to Punjab National Bank. This uh, the Trivandrum Punjab National Bank will forward the documents to Punjab National Bank of Rajukot. Punjab National Bank of Rajukot will hand over the railway receipt to uh, AN company. AN company will take delivery of the goods. Or they will sell it to some other watchmaker in Trivandrum. This is a real life scenario I have seen and handled. That's why I thought this will explain. Sometimes complex concepts can be explained with a real life example. This is a typical case. So bill collection as well as collection of check is one of the important services being rendered by banks.